we have an expert as the discussant. So we will give them five minutes for their discussion. Then we will have a group discussion. First discussion will be made by Professor Park won of Political Science and International Relations from SNU. Please. Good afternoon, everyone. At SNU, I'm uh, working as a professor at the Department of Political Science and International Relations. Well, I'm an expert on the election and politics. So I thought, is there anything special that I can discuss on COVID-19? So those who are majoring in science and the policy de developers, I, I thought that I should just listen to what they say when it comes to the issue of COVID-19. But uh, what I would like to discuss is mainly about the state, the rediscovery of the state during the COVID-19 outbreak. And what are the traces left by the COVID-19 outbreak and how citizens view the state differently after the COVID-19 outbreak. The reason is quite simple. Due to the quarantine and the world order itself is being changed amid the COVID-19 outbreak and the state can serve as the only shield for people. So it's like the quasi war that we're having at the moment. So ha the people are now viewing the state a bit differently. If I may elaborate on that point, let's think about the last election, the general election that we had. The turnout was uh, quite higher than expected, and the ruling party had a sweeping victory. Personally, if I may, give my opinions on the result. The individualism and the market-based political forces, such the propaganda disappeared. And I'm interpreting that result of the general election as the loss of the Conservative Party. When we talk about the nationalist in Korea, it's more viewed as the conservative party as opposed to the liberal or the welfare-oriented party. In Korea, we do have a really deep roots in uh, deep, deep roots in when it comes to the nationalistic a nationalist tradition. And as mentioned by Representative Yi Gwang Jae and other presenters, yes, the state plays a really important role during the crisis. And it's viewed as the natural response by the public. So the state is viewed really as an important the entity. So what we need is a not the human rights, but uh, stronger the social order. And we need to resolve the problematic the groups in our society to sustain our values and the legal order. And when we ask the questions like, is individual freedom more important than social order? So what comes first, individual freedom or social order? And 75%, and if you look at the result, except for the 8% who said, I'm not sure, then 75% responded that social order comes before individual's freedom. I've been doing the study like this for quite long, but this is the first time that I've seen the result like this. And I've also analyzed by the political party. And if you look at the the result, 
The 80% said the social order is more important than individual's freedom. The same for the supporters of the United Future Party. So whether the voters are conservative or the liberal, they believe the social order comes before individual's freedom. There's not many supporters for the Justice Party, but they t seems to be most realistic, uh, most uh, individualistic and neoliberal. Neo but other than the supporters of the Justice Party, the, all the voters responded that social order comes before individual's freedom. So we can conclude that citizens in Korea reach a consensus on this idea of social order versus individual's freedom. But I would like to put it a bit differently. I would like to propose an objection against such a social consensus. Yes, states' role is really important, and states can do so much for its citizens. But is it really the right way? But where can we find the space for the civil society, civic society, and the citizens? While listening to the presentation of Representative Yi gang I had this question in mind the citizens' values that you might think it's, uh, it sounds a bit not relevant at the moment. But I'm still thinking that there is a paradox and there is irony. But there seems to be the consensus reached in our society. But at the same time, the individual's freedom and the citizens' values should be revisited and should be re-examined. The, the Yi Guangzhe talked about new normal and the new deal. In the U.S., the government played a really important role in implementing the new deal. And there were other forces that joined to derive the result for the new deal in the U.S. So that's the question I would like to pose to the representative Yi Jae. <laughs> Professor Park won thank you very much for the discussion. I'd like to introduce you next presenter. Actually, this is an expert in the area of social um, welfare. I'd like to invite to the podium Professor Ku from Seoul National University. In the first session, Vice Minister Kim made a presentation. And last summer, I listened to, I had the opportunity to listen to his presentation. At the time, he mentioned that uh, he had a meeting with other Asian countries uh, to explain Korean uh, measures against COVID-19. So since that time, one year has passed, but and I, now that I uh, listened to his presentation uh, in the first session, I noticed that now he is making a presentation on the successful result of the uh, preventive measures and con control measures of Korea. What I want to tell you is that when it comes to uh, disease prevention and control, Korea may have succeeded, but in terms of social policy, I have some worries and concerns. As Researcher Mr. Kim Mi Goon mentioned in the previous presentation, we need to look at uh, statistical data. So we need to look at how much reduction was made in GDP. So we can make a comparison uh, between uh, data. In terms of the GDP reduction, Korea was least hardest among nations around the world. Because on average, other countries, they saw a 10% decrease in GDP. And OECD, uh, they uh, saw a reduction as well. But among the nations, Korea was hit least in terms of when you take a look at the G reduction in GDP, because there was a, just a 5% reduction. 
It is expected the OECD countries will see a 10% reduction in GDP, and globally, the reduction rate is expected in between 6 and 8%. But Korea, it was uh, projected that Korea will see a 2% decrease. Relatively speaking, it seems that Korea is responding to COVID-19 situation pretty well. Despite so, the impact or effect by the COVID-19 will not small at all. So uh, looking at the changes in over the, uh, during the uh, previous months, there were job losses of 860,000 and about 4, 000, uh, 400,000 people. They uh, were temporarily laid off. So in total, about 1.4 million people, uh, they lost their jobs. And much of them, you know, they are not working at all, and uh, some people are becoming daily workers. The social, uh, the income uh, distribution has been in improving in Korea. So when we uh, identify and analyze the data, like five, uh, the segments of the income class, we have seen an increase uh, over the last several years. However, when we compare the year 2019 and 2020, the uh, income inequality is growing again. And when you look at the lowest income class, even before the first quarter, even before being hit by COVID-19, we can see there is still an uh, income inequality growing up. So when you uh, compare the numbers and figures here in this table, you will see that the inequality gap is growing. What is fortunate, however, is that there are complementary measures that are taken by the government, so minimum income can be maintained thanks to that. So how the situations will develop for the future? So uh, looking at that question, uh, the statistical data are collected in the UK and in other countries. This is an interesting data result. The UK researched the areas of the UK where uh, where uh, so they looked at the depredation indexes of different areas and the area with high level deprivation index they have the highest death rate but what about the death rate concerning COVID-19 and please pay attention to green bars the area with the most number of uh, depro deprivation has is seeing higher death rate related to COVID-19. And another graph is really interesting as well. There was a survey in uh, March 2020. The portion of jobless people. So um, as you see, there is a percent, like 15% here in this graph. And referring to this graph, Probably we can assume what kind of future is coming to us. So countries around the world are responding to uh, the COVID-19 situations with social policies, and uh, Korea as well. You know, there was a lot of discussions whether the uh, emergency disaster relief fund should be provided to everyone based on uh, an universal principle or. Uh, whether or not it should be provided to only the vulnerable people. So the United States and uh, Japan, uh, they adopted universal income policies. What is interesting is that most of the European countries, they did not opt for universal support. They instead, they extended the existing social safety net. And Korea also offered the universal financial assistance for the people as part of the emergency disaster relief fund. 
So it seems to me Korea made that decision, made the choice, considering that Korean uh, safety, social safety net is still in is, is still in poor shape, and there was an urgent need for support. Despite so, we need to. It's time to think about what kind of measures we need to come up with, thinking about the post-COVID-19 situation. There are two kinds of prospects. As for the Europe, Europe is engaging in employment stability strategies, uh, whereas the U.S. is taking labor flexibility strategies. In Europe, many countries offer measures to support workers so that they can maintain their jobs. But in case of the United States, they offer wa uh, the compensating wages for uh, job losses. One of the exemplary models is the, uh, the, the Germany. So the, the uh, German government is providing 100% of the of 100% of the subsidies for the job losses. So it is rare rare to find unemployed persons, and this model is being introduced to France and even in the even in being introduced to the United States. So from the early stages of COVID-19, Korea has made an effort for the, the, the people who, uh, on the brink of losing their jobs. So almost 90% of uh, support is given to those people. Fortunately, uh, social, in terms of social policy, there is not enough support. And uh, the, uh, the, such, even if there is a support, the support is not given in an extensive manner at the moment in Korea. The irregular workers are part of the vulnerable, and also there are small business owners, and also there are those who will fall into the category of special occupation. So they don't have an access to beneficial social policies. In order to tackle the problem, we need to make an effort. So we are in the COVID-19 situation. When they are sick, they should be able to take a sick leave without being concerned about losing their jobs. So this will be enabled if we introduce the sickness and injury benefit to Korea. At the moment, we don't have the benefit systems in Korea. So we need to enable a society where people are able to take a leave when they are sick. So this is uh, an important piece that needs to be filled in. In particular, the most the, uh, the class or the, the, the people who has been hit hardest was uh, the small business owners, as I mentioned, or those who fall into the category of special occupation. But uh, those classes or those people cannot be supported well with the current system. But when you take a look at Italy and other countries in Europe, the portion of small business owners out of the total population is quite high. And, but they provide the necessary support for small business owners. And Italy has their own support system. Um, even if they are not providing real uh, benefits to the small business owners. So in the, in the mid to long term, they also need to reinforce the system that they have established. Now, among many people, there are concerns about the national debt growing, but Korea is in a quite uh, stable situation. But in the long term, we have challenges to deal with. Thank you. Professor Ko Ku in Hue, thank you very much. Now we will begin the discussion. Representative Yi Gwang Jae, the researcher Kim Mi Gun, and Professor Park Won Ho Ku in Hue, please come up to the stage for the discussion. This is my chair. So let's begin the discussion session. Just like the first session, 
we have uh, really the expert from each field who will give us uh, the insight into the issue. And the discussion will be made uh, really briefly to uh, for uh, to allow us to keep the time limit. And Professor Park Won Ho, do you have any question to the presenter? I've already posed the question in my discussion. If I put it again, now, in some sense, so regardless of your political um, party, which political party that you support, that we have the consensus among the public on the role of the government. And if I listen to the presentation of Representative Yi Guangjie, the state's role is really highlighted. And you mentioned that neighbor and down so should provide a more accurate information and should become like a Google. And I'm not sure how the government will do that. Yeah, to provide a more accurate information to the public. Yes, yeah, so that was mentioned in your presentation. But if I put it somewhat differently, in doing so, the civic society uh, this role might be shrinked, and through proactive policies, yes, we can uh, do that. But we have to carefully consider the role of the civic society as well. And what you present is a very specific, but I'm not sure where the role of the citizens can be in the implementing the new deal that you stated in your presentation. Representative Yi Guang Jie, would you like to respond? Yes, the state, the role of the state, I believe it's a time that we rediscover the role of the state. In the market, there is the growth and inequalities. After the Second World War, the government's role has grown bigger, and the market grew as well. And we have growing inequalities as a result of the that. And it's a not it's a now time for the state to play a more role. So I think there should be the balance. And secondly, when the state plays a bigger role in the financial asset of the Republic of Korea, it's like a one the one point eight uh, eighteen trillion. So we do have the market and the financial assets available. So we need the system and the state system that will uh, allow um, such assets to be utilized most efficiently. And yes, of course, the citizens' role is more important as well. The soldiers and the citizens voluntarily practice the social distancing and helped a lot in implementing the government's guidelines so in the small cities in the future, I believe through the participatory income that we can build the stronger little like uh, acorn cities. I can take care of the kids of other families and we can help each other in our neighborhood. And that's the revolution that we envision for the future. So in conclusion, yes, the government and the state is being rediscovered. We recovered and rediscovered, and we have to find the balance between the role of the state and the role of the citizens. And the government, the state's role can serve as the catalyst, and we can assure in a society where the citizens can play a more mature role. Uh, you look like uh, you have an additional question, so please. Uh, no, but I will now give the Professor Gu Wiene a chance to ask a question. Uh, Dr. Kim Mi-gon was one of the major contributors um, in establishing safety, uh, social safety net uh, right after the financial crisis in 1997 and 1998. Uh, so I get the impression that uh, the social safety net of Korea, much of its part was um, established and created back then. It will be great, and if you make a comparison, the then times and now. In 1998, so the financial crisis has hit uh, hit Korea, 
and that was part of the that was not the part of the economic a global economic crisis and at the time the financial crisis that hit Korea was part of the Asian crisis not the global crisis at the time the World Bank and IMF they supported uh, money for Korea so they gave us financial support but instead they forced us to adopt new neoliberalism. In order to ease the side effects of the neoliberalism, uh, we need to think about how to improve pension system and how to improve the basic livelihood uh, system. So there were suggestions made by them, like uh, it is something called cell one and cell two. In today's era, the crisis that we're facing now is a global crisis not a crisis confined to Asia or a particular region. So the financial crisis that came in 1998 was the one we could tackle in, uh, in relatively speaking, in an easy manner. But the current crisis we are facing now is as mentioned in my presentation. There are exporters and there are importers, so exporting countries and importing countries, and depending on each other's position, the economy or the crisis we are in is difficult to be overcome. As you may have read newspaper reports, there are prospects for this year's economic growth rate. And as time goes by, the economic growth rate projected this year and the following years is getting worse and worse. I believe that the uh, epidemic crisis is following the same uh, directions of the uh, economic crisis. They are together in our path. So there are many challenges that we need to overcome. We need to think about you know, making an economic growth, but at the same time, we need to think about creating a, a community with civil organizations or private organizations in order to tackle crisis. For example, in the city of Jeonju, uh, there is a social movement uh, to become a good homeowners, to, be, uh, to become good landlord. So in this uh, crisis, you know, as, as a landlord, I'm willing to make a reduction in rent. So that kind of social movement is something that we need. Thank you. Professor Bach, do you have any additional question that you would like to pose? If not, I may, well, I would like to ask a question. It's not a really a difficult question. It might be the question that can be posed by the public. So you made a really good suggestion, the digital New Deal, Green New Deal, anything, if, uh, if that can be realized, that would be really great for the Republic of Korea. Is it your personal idea? Or is there any bill being prepared in the National Assembly? Any specific policy is being discussed in the National Assembly? Yes, I've studied this issue for long. I believe education is really important. The providing the top quality education at a low cost, that is the priority that I, uh, I'm really th thinking this as a priority and try to develop the policy on edu online education as well. So housing, education, and the culture are part of our life. And I live in the city of Wonju, and it's uh, uh, the housing there is a less uh, less expensive than the housing in Korea. But if we can afford our housing, and if you can enjoy the culture in such smaller cities, then we can enjoy the better quality of life. So I'm approaching this way that we can develop the small cities and many discussions are being made in the National Assembly to make that into legislation. I'd like to ask a question to uh, Dr. Kim mi -gon. So I'd like to give you a question from a point of a general citizen. During your presentation, you said that the final objective in these current times uh, should be to pursue happiness. Probably many people have the same view these days. 
rather than GDP, if happiness becomes the objective of policies, would it work? And uh, probably there would be some people who are concerned, who, f who would feel insecure about that. So what is your take on such a view? The definition of uh, happiness itself, the word, is something abstract. Probably the general citizens may have that kind of uh, thinking, as you mentioned. How to measure happiness depends on the social and economic environmental indexes. So if we have the proper indexes relevant to society and environment, probably we will able to measure the level of happiness. And uh, what I know is that the Statistical Office of Korea is also working on it. And uh, several years ago, I conducted a research on uh, happiness in the Korean society. So in order to measure happiness, maybe we need to come up with some kind of indexation system or some kind of indicator systems. So once we define what kind of indicator should be used for the measurement, what we, th what we need to think about is the the real definition of happiness. When it comes to happiness, you know, there could be many elements like health or the materialistic wealth and so on. But happiness you know, has many elements in it. However, the element in worst shape or in poorest shape has the biggest impact on the level of happiness. For example, uh, there are many nutrients needed for living creature. So there are many criteria met. However, if one of the elements is missing poorly, so that will have a big impact on uh, the result of the growth of the living creature. So the reason why I'm telling you is that in our society, we need to identify in which area or in which element we are lacking where we are in poor shape. So. If we do that identification, we'll be able to make a measurement of happiness in our society. Thank you. Is there any other question? Let me give you another question then. I'm not sure this question is. I should pose it to Representative Lee Gwang Jae or the researcher Kim Min Gon. As mentioned by Professor Park Won Ho, the state's role has been growing during the crisis. Yes, it's relevant during the crisis. But it's not necessarily a good thing, as we can see in many countries. The political, the authoritarianism is uh, re resuming and being observed in many different countries. Yes, in Korea, the state has become bigger during the pandemic. And while protecting the democratic values, that we should uh, balance the role of the big state and democracy. So I think that uh, this question should be posed to the representative Yi Guang Jae. Was it yesterday? Professor Chang Dok Jin wrote a column on that issue. So I got some idea from that column yesterday. Yes, there is a concern and the fear over such dilemma. Yes, the state is playing a lot of role for its citizen. And the Korea was able to get here today because of the big role played by the government. And many citizens are expecting that the government will do even more as we move into the future. But as you can see, in many different countries, I'm not sure is it because of the COVID-19 outbreak or there was some populist politician that already was there, but it, was, it became more obvious because of the COVID-19 outbreak. Yes, there existed such concern. There have existed such concern. And yes, the mature citizens' awareness and the perceptions are really important. That was mentioned earlier. But there were some ugly sides seen 
during the crisis. It was not necessarily for the foreigners. Those who have to come into Korea, the Koreans who have to come back into the Korea, how they are viewed by the Korean public, it was not really the uh, it was not really well received by the citizens in Korea. And the role of the state is it, when it is well balanced with uh, mature the citizens' perceptions. That, then we can build a more mature society. Sometimes I feel like uh, we're losing that mature citizenship side. So that's why I posed that question. I believe that the Koreans are amazing. If the mask were disputed, like uh, Abe mask, that w I think the Koreans will be really the startled. The government's role is becoming stronger in terms of protecting the Korean citizens. And if Korean government becomes authoritarian, then the Koreans will not just uh, turn a blind eye to such a situation. If you look at the US, the healthcare system and the medical systems are too liberal. So it's a really difficult to contain and to mitigate the pandemic. And in Europe, the situation was quite similar. But in Korea, we do have the outstanding healthcare professionals and the medical facilities, and they voluntarily join forces together in responding to the pandemic. The citizens that are battling against the the authoritarian government, but now citizens' role will be really important in the future paradigm. And the Koreans were not really hooting during the crisis. Uh, that I think uh, the Korean should take pride in approaching the issue like that. And I'm sure that we can create the new paradigm as well. And in there will be the new era of Asia or the Orient will come. I'm sure that the Koreans, when the government turns authoritarian, then the, the Korean citizens will not, um, will not turn a blind eye to such a situation. So from now on, we will pose a question that have been, that have been collected via YouTube chat box and neighbor TV. Yes, I'm seeing the questions now on the screen. So the emergency allowance were provided. So uh, are we going to a show in uh, universal income era with? I think that actually Professor Ku will be able to give you the more accurate answer. So uh, I'd like to express my um, take on basic income. So if the basic income is introduced right away, um, it is uh, difficult to do it in reality. However, we need to definitely review uh, the idea of adopting basic income. And someday in the future, basic income will be introduced. But how do we need to approach to for the adoption? Of, of basic income. And uh, at the moment, the children's allowances are being provided for the ages of over six. But and more and more, we need to expand the subjects or to expand the number of children subject to the children's allowances. So there is the echo generation. In case of Korea, starting from uh, 2018, the pop number of populations who are able to involved in production is on the decrease. However, the so-called echo generation uh, between the age uh, aged between 26 and 29, uh, the echo uh, generation is on the increase. So that's why we need to increase job opportunities for the younger people. And uh, by taking advantage of the system that we already have, more and more, uh, portion to portion, uh, partially, we need to increase the number of jobs available for young people so that we can adopt the basic income system someday in the future. 
the emergency allowance, uh, connecting that with the universal income, I do not think that that's the right approach. The emergency allowance is a different from the universal income. Universal income is the income given on a regular basis to all the citizens, but this emergency allowance was a one-time allowance given to the public. But if I may find the commonalities between them, in the case of emergency, sometimes there's a difficult to uh, discover and identify the target so that allowance should be provided to the uh, all citizens. So that might be the commonality between the two. So that's why the Korean government decided to provide allowance to all the citizens. But the social safety net was uh, quite weak before, so that was the reason that we had to provide the emergency allowances to all the people. But the those who have been affected heavily by the pandemic should be uh, prioritized more in the future. Yes, the representative Yi Guang Jie, though the universal income, yes, that was talked about a lot. And we have to protect the socially vulnerable in our society. Yes, I agree that should be the major concept. But, for example, if we give the 500,000 won to all the Koreans, and that will be the 3, three trillion won per year, and we're spending that will be the growing number of people who are paying the taxes and the growing growing number of people will be using the tax revenues then contributing to them. So we should really prioritize on helping those who need the help the most. Housing, education for children, transportation, culture, telecommunication. So these are the regular expenses we needed to live in the big cities. And it's a really expensive to uh, just rent the small the studio in the Xinchon neighborhood. So we should make the big cities m more affordable to live in for young people. So we need uh, such a social structure that I believe is uh, better than the universal income. Together with the, Kim, the chairman Kim Yong-hae and the president Kim Chang-hae, uh, came up with this idea. We have 5% of the public housing in Korea. And in addition to that, that we can also provide the public housing with the medical facilities. Then that will have an even greater effect than the universal income. So when it comes to the income, I think we should focus more on the weak, uh, the socially weak and the socially vulnerable people. But now we are during the crisis, so we have to think about the more universal measures. And that's it. Yes, universal income is being talked about a lot. And that three uh, persons responded to the one question on universal income. We have a five minute left, so let's tackle one more question. I think that this is a question from a comprehensive point of view. I believe that maybe two panelists can answer the question. So there's a talk about uh, the employment system for all the citizens of, the, of Korea. So why is that topic being talked about? So the employment uh, insurance system for all citizens of Korea is uh, under is is being discussed, but that is that is that could be one of the innovative ideas. But uh, in addition to that, if we are willing to expand uh, the insurance system, uh, there could be several measures we can take in order to bring the small business owners into this insurance system. We need to give some kind of support for them. For example, I work for a research institute, so I am insured of the employment insurance program. So the user, the company, uh, pays the fee, insurance fee, and I, I, I pay, uh, pay the uh, employment uh, fees as well. But what about the small business owners? Actually, they cannot afford paying the fees. They are not in, in a situations to do that. So that's why 
for some degrees or to some to, to some degrees, some portions of the uh, employment insurance fee should be supported, financially supported by the government. That means that the government needs to inject more budget to do that. And one of the ways for the budget injection is that in Korea, there are people who are insured of a special kinds of pension systems, like uh, uh, the government officials or those who are, you know, who belong to a special, you know, occupation category. So those who are getting the benefits of the system, it is very less likely for them to be laid off. So in the meantime, of course, they need to pay insurance fees, but given the fact that they are less likely to be laid off, you know, I think they can pay some of the portions of the fees. And this is, um, yeah, it is worthwhile considering this option. Yeah, Professor Ku. What I want to tell you first is that when it comes to employment insurance system, in other countries, people are considering it as complementary money after being laid off. In the current situation, we need to focus on maintaining jobs. So maintaining employment is very important. So um, that is the, uh, in this area, there are differences between the US and Europe. After being laid off, it's really difficult for a worker to recover uh, income. So before being laid off and before losing a job, I think it's necessary to help them to maintain their job. And expanding employment insurance system to all citizens of Korea is something that I agree on. However, in the current crisis or in the current challenge, the employment insurance system uh, should is, is something that we need to work on right uh, right now in a gradual manner. So I'd like to, you know, give the questions to uh, lawmaker Mr. Lee. First, I think the SMEs will suffer soon, and the mid-sized companies will suffer subsequently. So as mentioned by the Vice Prime Minister Yeon Jae, is uh, quite right. Since late last year, the financial institutions should extend their loan period for all the businesses and extend that period. And secondly, in Japan, during the financial crisis, there was a bold movement made by the Conservative Party that if wanted by the SMEs, they are not requesting and the forcing the SMEs to pay the interest. Uh, be because of such measures, the Japan was able to overcome the financial crisis. So we need the bold approach in terms of finance. And when it comes to the employment insurance, yes, as you mentioned by Professor Ku, it's a really difficult to recover once it becomes difficult. In the U.S., there is a PPP, really the proactive, the allowance and the support is provided to the small businesses. So those who have the job at the moment that we need the more the proactive and the preemptive measures to support them while they are still in employment. Then we should, uh, the government, uh, when the government is uh, spending, that the public should not worry that it will be the burden for them later. So it's a time that we should join together and support each other at least till the next year because the COVID-19 outbreak will not be over soon. Thank you very much. So this concludes the second session. The, all the panelists, please remain seated and let me go over the the session three. Session three will be on the COVID-19 outbreak and education, technology, and ethics. The moderator will be the Professor Lee Seok Jae from College of Humanities at SNU. Thank you very much for the excellent presentations and wonderful discussions. So this concludes session two, and we will resume the session at 5 p.m.